Oh, welcome to another vintage cube draft. This pack is insane. Mox Emerald, Emrakul, Lotus, Identity, Sneak Attack, and then a bunch of secondary amazing cards like Carnosaur, Remand, Lorien Revealed, Goldspan. This pack is friggin' bananas. Okay, I mean, we're taking, we're taking Lotus, obviously, but, you know, still, bananas pack. Fantastic. Something is coming back, so we'll see what it is. Second pack, less bananas. <laughs> uh, first turn Court of Garenbrig, is that good? This card destroyed me every time I've played against it. Uh, I did. I passed a Mox. Can you believe it? Oh my god. <laughs> I keep forgetting. I'm sorry. <sighs> Babe, I'm sorry. Are you leaving? Did you leave work? Did you get to leave early? Are you coming home? Are you illegally watching at work? Oh, waiting to scan something. Gotcha. Babe, what's the pick here? She's not gonna know. She's like, I don't even know what half these cards do. Like, she probably doesn't know what Delayed Fire Blast Fireball does, I'm sure. Uh, Preordain is actually very good. All right, we'll take a Preordain. Oh, an Archon of Cruelty. Fascinating. Fascinating. Also Reprieve, also Subtlety, Thieving Skydiver, both Verdant Catacomb and Watery Grave. I like V-Click back in my day. No, V-Click's fine, I think. Good, good times clicking them. Give them a little click, you know. Brea card? <laughs> Is that a, what does that even mean? Yes, we only have Black Lotus and Preordained so far. I think it's Archon of Cruelty, man. I just want to take Archon of Cruelty and cast Archon of Cruelty. Does that make me a bad person? Maybe. These packs have been very good. I think there's been a lot of... Oh, Atraxa? Okay, well, now we're just... Now we're settling in. This is... This is very good. If Grave Titan or Tinker comes back, I'll be I'll be grateful. Yeah, we're definitely taking a Traxa here. These are probably the two two of the best reanimate and through the breach targets. So that's pretty cool. You know what would be perfect for this deck? I can think of two cards, in fact. You know, I'm starting to think that you don't actually know the effect of the cards you're putting in the deck. I do love Brazen Borrow, but I also kind of like Cityscape Leveler as a way to just, like if the Tinker comes back. It probably won't come back though. But again, it's another good reanimate target. Birds seems good. I I disagree. This is I don't feel like this is a deck that's gonna have a green source on turn one to put a birds into play. Uh, I think Brazen Borrower is the safe pick. I think Cityscape Leveler is the on theme pick. I'm gonna take Leveler here. I think Leveler is very good. I do like Chart of Course, especially with cards I want to discard. Summon Library is good in every green deck, but I don't know how to break it to you. This is not a green deck. Yeah, we're taking Chart, of course. Apparently the cat I'm supposed to scan is evil and attacking everyone. So, <laughs> so that's cool. Well, when you get to it, it's going to be sedated somewhat, right? Like, it's not going to be fully fully aware of its, of its surroundings, you know? It's going to be like, you know? Less like this and more like this. That's the... I think we're just taking Teferi here. Teferi is really good. <laughs> Third pick to green card. Don't gaslight me. Okay. Yeah, I'll just take Teferi. Half-drugged cats can worse. <laughs> is, I think Elderb Fiend has been drinking today. 
Also show and tell. Are we show and telling? I feel like we could safely show and tell. This feels like a show and tell start. I also feel like show and tell has been safer recently because there's no like oblivion rings and stuff. I want that bit. Oh, 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 show and tell Emrakul now. Oh yeah, bring it. No one took the Emrakul. What in the, what in the earth? They sure can be worse. I want that bitch knocked all the way out. <laughs> yeah, but would you say cats are worse than dogs in terms of patience and scanning? Okay, nothing here. Rankle? Yeah, cats, I, that, that would be my impression as well. I, I, would, I would assume cats are worse. I don't actually love Faithless Looting, but I think it's probably better than Rankle. Rankle McStankle. Oh, Skydiver came back. That's exciting. Gideon. Are we blue-white reanimate? <laughs> I don't know. Looking, looking good. Like we, we could just be either a blue white mid range deck or a, or a anime deck. Who can say? They're much easier to scan because they don't require any shoulder muscle. Oh yeah, that's that makes sense because they're so tiny. They're just little guys, you know. Oh, a Mox Jet. <laughs> oh, fantastic. Ooh, that's a bingo. That goes well with the Lotus, I think. <clears throat> I like cats in the wild. What about at our house? What about a little man? Yeah, we're just taking Mox Jet. Not really close. Oh, Currency Converter's a pretty sweet discard out. Our house is the wild. <laughs> hmm. Touche. Caracas is nice. It can save our our two legendary guys. Man, we're kind of all over the place. We have three good white cards. We're base blue. We want black to reanimate. We kind of want red to through the breach. Swords is good. Caracas is good. Currency converter is a discard outlet, which could be which could be very important. Especially if we start reanimating. Um, I, I don't think it's Relic. I think Relic is a bit too costly. I think it's either Converter or Caracas. I think it's Converter. Like, we're not necessarily even playing white. But Currency Converter is a satisfying looter, especially when this card is an Exhum. We're definitely taking the Exhum here. Because now we have ways to discard our three guys. Yeah, that seems good. Okay, now we can take some... Now we think of land. <laughs> uh, it's probably just Godless Shrine, which does let us kind of splash Teferi. And we can kind of be Esper, I think. Nothing else in here is good, right? No, not really. We'll just take Godless Shrine. It helps us cast. Sarah does let you recast Lotus, but it's also double white, which is frustrating. These are both double white, so unless we're like really compelled to be white, then I don't see it really like, I don't see it happening, you know? Recurring Nightmare. Frantic Search also pretty good. I don't think we're Recurring Nightmare. I mean, we have Gideon. Could be Esper Recurring Nightmare. I do like Frantic Search a lot, though. Especially because, like, we can discard guys and draw into the... We thought about making radiology shirts and saying my favorite cat is a sedate cat. That's probably not. <laughs> that feels like a shirt you can't wear into the wild because people won't get it and they'll think you just hate cats. I think it's Frantic Search here. I think Frantic Search is better for the deck we have rather than the deck we want.
I mean, it could just be Gristlebrand here. Gristlebrand does replace Emrakul. Plain Swamp is also an option. I think we got to do Gristlebrand. That feels... Oh, Kaito is also a discard outlet, right? That's actually pretty decent. Okay. Um, yeah, all right. Not feeling terrible about some of these picks. I would definitely like some more reanimate stuff because that's kind of... That's the whole plan. That's the whole... That's the whole ball of, ball of yarn. Ball of wax? What do they say? I do like Lingering Souls, and if... Recurring Nightmare comes back, it's very good. Same with Elspeth. None of these other cards are exciting. Um, I don't need Timeless Dragon. It's a creature to get in the graveyard. It's also a um, Plane Cycler. Urtai is great. Okay. Well, we're getting... A oh, damn. That's, that's unfortunate. Maybe we're just splashing black for some reanimates. Cabal Ritual is so bad. I've never had someone cast a Cabal Ritual against me in most, you know, any of the recent iterations of Cube. I feel like, I mean, we're definitely strong Esper here, but we might just be splashing black for like Urtai, Kaito, and Exhum. Turn one Deluge does sound pretty good. You can Deluge for 19. And then you can just play on hard mode. Wedding announcement when we have Elspeth, Gideon, and Lingering Souls. Okay. Hero. I feel like <laughs> despite these, we're kind of getting pushed into a really good blue-white mid-range deck. Man. Like wedding announcement, lingering souls, Sarah Paragon, Hero Blade Hold, Gideon, and Elspeth, plus Lotus and Mox to cast them. Uh, that's pretty good. <sighs> is it just Deserted Beach? With no reanimation. I mean, Corpse Dance is fine, but I don't think Corpse Dance is better than like a, a dedicated dual land that we desperately need right now. A Nindle. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what that card is either. What the hell is a Nindle? Uh, yeah, we're just taking Deserted Beach here. Okay. Col Colonnade's nice. I think Mana Vault's a little better. Um, I know, I know Andor Andoral is what you're talking about, but Anindal is, is just a funny way of spelling that. Yeah, we'll take Mana Vault and hope for Colonnade or Fallen Shinobi to, to, to swing around. Or Guardian Scaler or Treachery. Like, this pack's pretty good. Rafine's Tower would be great as well. Actually, it might be Rafine's Tower. Jeez. Over Mana Vault, though? Possibly. I mean, we have these. Yeah, I think it's got to be Tower, actually. That seems weird, but... You know, I think it's I think it's correct. Palace Jailer is good, but we have so many four drops right now. Oh, Lord. This is definitely not Emery. I, no, but it's, I can't tell if you're just saying random things or if you're actually making serious suggestions. We have like three artifacts in our deck. Emery has literally just put the top four cards of your library into your graveyard as a one-two. It's definitely Palace Jailer. It's got to be Palace Jailer. Obviously, Super Fritz wants Golos. That makes total sense. That checks out. Through the Breach. Are we going to have a way to splash like one red? Because this is a through the breach deck for sure, dude. Yeah, looping Lotus is sick, but like, <laughs> I mean, you literally have to have Emery and Lotus and cards to cast. Like, I don't know. That's not. <sighs> I don't think it's headquarters. Like, I, I kind of think it... I'm going to take through the breach. We'll see. We'll see what happens. We'll just pick up any fixing. Talisman is great here, I think. Um, It fits on our curve, and it ramps us to these massive four drops. <sighs> this deck is really weird. I don't know what to show. I don't know if, like, Show and Tell wants all these creatures. So does Exhum. 
but like those are very minimal ways of I guess through the breach does too. I don't know, man. Well, no land and no uh no cards for us really. Glimmer lens. I mean it could just be seal it's probably just seal of removal, I guess. Oh my god, what is going on? Yeah, we haven't seen any reanimate cards. Phyrexian Metamorph seems fine. <laughs> Could take an Atali. Like, we've gotten every, nearly every good reanimate target. Yeah, I guess we'll just take Metamorph. Virtue's fine. Actually, Virtue is fine, right? Puts cards in the... Yeah, alright. I'll take Virtue, because it is a two-drop that also gets to reanimate some of these guys. Let's take Hero and Gideon out. Take Wedding Announcement out. Like, this feels like a decent 23. Probably going to take through the Breach out for something. <sighs> Mana base is kind of lacking here. We'll take Wrath of God. I think Paragon with, like, two Planeswalkers, Currency Converter, and, Lo and Lotus is pretty good. Uh, Corpse Dance came back. I mean, I'll take a Corpse Dance for sure. I don't think it's one of the better reanimate spells, but I'll definitely, like, I'll make it work if I have to. This deck could definitely have been worse. Could definitely have been better. Yeah, that's what I mean. Like, I'm like, someone is cutting, like, animate dead, reanimate, like, shallow grave, and, like, I don't know what they're doing with those. Because we even have an, an Atali even came back really late. Well, okay. Guardian and Fallen Shin will be here. What do we have? Thieving Skydiver, Lingering Souls. Yeah, Fallen Shinobi's got to be the pick here, right? So now we need one cut. I mean, you can probably cut, like, Cityscape Leveler. I think it's the worst of the four. Hey, Golos came back. Masker Girl also has been pretty pretty impressive in my experience. I don't think we're taking Golos. We can definitely board in Masker Girl. Oh, Odawara seems great. That's a reasonable pickup here. This, uh, this constant pressure to take Ugin and Sylvan Library are just too much. Eh, Archangel Avison's fine. Not going to play her, but she's fine. This is a solid 23, I think. I don't think I don't think our strategy came together uh, as well as we would have liked, but I also think we got some pretty powerful cards. We have a, a decent sideboard. Uh, we got Wrath, Masker Girl... Like, these are even castable. Um, we could play... Oh, we could actually play Waterlog Grove to cast this. That's kind of interesting. It wheeled because no one wanted it, Stuart. No one wanted Ugin. My gosh. All right, let's sort by color. Oh, this is very, very evenly distributed here. Okay. Let's see what we got. I did. Well, then, then you have to jump in the queue... And you have to be the Ugin taker that you want to see in the world, I think. I love Ugin, don't get me wrong, but... Eight mana for a creature that I can't reanimate... For a card that I can't reanimate and I can't cheat into play somehow. If Show and Tell could put... Buddy, you know if I have channel, I'm taking the Ugin. Alright, so what do we have? Three, four, five, six white sources. Let's go up to seven. Three, four, five, six... Six black sources, three, four, five, six, seven, seven blue sources. So we have less black. I actually think we might want more black than white here because we do have these three black cards. So that puts our black totals up to a lot more than white. Plus we have a plain cycler. Is this four, five, six, seven, nine, ten? This is correct. 
Oh yeah, show and tell is artifact, creature, enchantment, or land. Yeah, there's always times where I'm like, oh, can I put this into play with a show and tell? And it's like, oh no, because it was written, it was created back in a time where planeswalkers didn't exist. So I am surprised it doesn't just say permanent, right? Because like creature enchantment artifact or land are literally all of the permanents at that time. So I don't know why they just said put it, put a permanent into play because then it would, it would stand. They just didn't have the foresight, you know? You can Eureka and Eugene, an Eugene, a Eugene, <laughs> but they took Eureka out, which was like a pet card of mine. Eureka is like the better version of show and tell. And there were many, many games that I would win with, with Eureka that I wouldn't have won with show and tell. Because the thing is usually your deck is built around those cards. So you have multiple of these creatures. It was like hypergenesis back in the day where like, Hypergenesis is good because you're putting like Angel of Despair and Gristlebrand and you know all these all the cards into play instead of just like one card. Whereas like if your opponent if you play like an Emrakul off of Show and Tell, and they have an answer for it, well they had an answer for your whole strategy. Whereas if you put an Emrakul and an Ugin and a Gristlebrand into play, like they're gonna have a much harder time dealing with it. And that was that was pretty much my experience with oh this is good. Um, with Eureka, whereas like you can craft hands and games that like don't care about what your opponent does. All right, let's be showing and telling. I was really hoping for the Lotus off the top. Lotus off the top of my, the top of your what? Tell me. Uh, I think it's just Swamp here and then we can play Deserted Beach next turn untapped. Cathar Commando. All right. That seems good. Green white seems like it could be decent for show and tell. We'll we'll see. This costs four. God, that's so much mana. They're just dis they have four cards? They mulligan this game? Oh, they went to six on the play. Yeah, all right. Lotus off the top of my top of my bottom. <laughs> oh, that's a... That's a Stuart original right there. See, this could work poorly if they end up having a, an answer to this. I guess then we can palace jail this. It's not, oh, we just win. <laughs> Did not see that coming. All right, well. Top of my bottom, top of the bottom to you. <laughs> We're having a good time. Everybody's having a good time. Huh. Turn one Elspeth seems pretty good. Do we just turn one Elspeth? Play a card, win the game. <laughs> oh Lord. All right, we'll Lotus. Crack Lotus, Elspeth, make a guy. Go ahead, little champer. May all your little champers be champers. That doesn't make any sense. Why would he say something like that? It's absolute nonsense. No blocks. Play this. Play this. Play this. When this happens to you, you're literally enraged. Look at what you become. I mean... That's kind of always how cube goes, right? I get enraged when this happens to me, but like you always want it to happen to you. So, you know, I, I accept that as well. Like I understand that like 
sometimes you have to be the monster you don't want to see in the world. I will double block. Really? That's just a one for one. You know what I'm saying? Oh, look at that guy. Look at that beautiful, beautiful boy. I'd like to keep the black up so then we can actually virtue, but let's draw a card and discard. Let's, let's, let's tip the BZ in the. Uh, lock, lock the Wayne scorn. What do they get? They got an Avison's Pilgrim? That's not going to compete. Yeah, sometimes you're getting shit on and sometimes you're the turd that channels in Emrakul, you know? Show and tell for Archon. Urtai? I mean, Urtai does the job. Because we're not letting a hero of Bladehold just exist in the world. Poor Bladel just wanted to be alive. <laughs> yeah, me too. Oh, a Celestial Colonnade, that's fascinating. This guy's gone. Pop out these, these yards. Let me ask you something. You guys ever Sarah Paragon and then got Lotus back? That's pretty cool. Hmm, that is a creature. One, two, three, four. Oh, we don't have double white. Uh, yes, we do. We just haven't used double white. Now we're just going to start dealing some, some better damage, you know? Oh, wow. Interesting not killing the Lotus here. Because next turn we can actually just cast Virtue of Persistence and then start putting these guys into the graveyard. Even though there's already a Gristlebrand, that's fine. This is also seven mana. We can just cast Archon or Atraxa if we draw a land. Yeah, this game feels like it's within our... Oh, also we just make our thing as indestructible forever. Huh. Well, <laughs> that's pretty good. It's always the question of do you like... I think we cast Archon over a track set to be quite honest. But maybe not. Which one of which one of these do we cast? This is the hardest question. This blocks prime time better, but I don't know if I really care about that. Like, I'm pretty sure they just go block here, take five. They're, like, they're basically dead with Archon. I don't think the cards in hand matter. Like, the biggest consideration for me was that, like, 
this is going to be easy to cast next turn off of our regular mana, whereas this is going to be diff more difficult to cast. But this just, they're at one. So, like, turning this guy sideways next turn just kills them. Yeah, if they go upheaval, though, it's going to be really sad. They're not tapping like an upheaval. Oh, they're tapping like we win the game. All right, well, I accept. <sighs> yeah, I think we're like a good combination of like mid-range and reanimate. So, Oh, great. All right. Also, if you guys want to support the channel, definitely consider subscribing or following. Got a little sub goal. I will keep this hand. Two very good uh, discard outlets in Kaito and Currency Converter. So next turn we can actually go Odawara into Talisman into Preordain, try to hit a black. Yep. Oh, look, we hit a black. I'm going to bottom Palace Jailer and just keep the swamp on top. That seems good. That's what they were going to do. All right, they did not do anything there. Well, let's hope they don't have sad counterspell, right? Oh, they didn't. Oh, he phases out, right? So we can make a ninja and then not worry about yeah, that seems good. Let's do that. Let's ninja. Great. <laughs> well, that's the end, I guess. Always a pleasure, Hallbreacher. I mean, if they don't have something right now, we can always Urtai Resurrected the Hull Breacher, but they have to have something right now, right? I guess it is comeuppance for turn one Elspeth, but that was a different person, you know? I feel like your comeuppance has to come from... No, maybe not. That's not how karma works, I guess. 
<sighs> All right, well, I guess I've earned it then. They're really taking their time. So I feel like it's not like time twister, right? Never mind. <laughs> it probably is now. Yep, crack lotus for three blue. Time spiral. Untap your three lands. Tezzeret. I I've made mistakes everywhere. All right, search for two. Grim Monolith? Ta Talisman. Okay. Now Time Twister? Tireless Tracker. What the hell is going on? What the hell is going on? Okay, that is a land. So I'm pretty sure we kill this. Well, we've survived. Karma is a chameleon. It can come and go. Jesus, God. <laughs> Super Fritz, please. It's just, it's just attacked. If you attacked, yeah, sure, I attacked. I protect. That guy's good. That guy is pretty good. I mean, it's alternatively, we could have discarded something to currency converter to make a 2 2 as well. That is, in fact, an option. All right, so they have Lion's Eye Diamond and Hull Breacher, so it's very clear that they're... What are they doing? What's going on? They have no cards in hand. Oh, they're just bringing this guy back to draw some cards? Sure. So they discarded Temple Garden to Lion's Eye Diamond to reanimate this gentleman. Hmm, sounds fine. What happens when he dies? Give me the unearthed ruling. Give me the unearthed text. Exile instead of putting it anywhere else. So it actually doesn't get the... They don't draw cards off this guy. Where's he going? I mean, I'd rather keep Kaito alive here, so... They have three cards in hand. I do not think you're going to go to five. Yep, cool. Oh, I guess it hasn't happened yet. He hasn't died yet, so... We'll see if that's... Yep, didn't happen. Great. Great, Scott. I like a Lingering Souls. Hmm, fascinating. Did they not activate Tezzeret? <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty good for us. All right. Um, oh, they activated for zero to get Lion's Eye Diamond. Got it. Okay. I was like, wow, that was weird. Nope, that makes sense. I thought they just had that in hand. 
Did they? Yes. Yes, they did. Okay. It's all coming together. Come on, little ninja. Oh, it's happening. You just get to eat a Tezzeret here? That seems really good. They're really taking their time with their with their responses though, you know? Well, I think we draw. I would like to hit a land, preferably a white source. Any day now. Black source, got it. All right, <laughs> well, well, sure, we could play in cycle, but that doesn't help us play three, two, three drops, so. Like, I'd like to play Teferi and Lingering Souls. We could also just keep up Corpse Dance for Urtai. I don't think that's great, but... Especially with, like, multiple discard sources. I mean, I kind of just want to bounce... I kind of just want to play Teferi and bounce the... Um... the tireless tracker. And then worst case scenario, like we make a, I guess we can't make a guy. Dang it. Like we're like one short of everything we want to do. I guess I'm just crossing my fingers for a white source here. I mean, even not cycling though, still like we can still play lingering souls. We can go get Rafine's Tower. Like, it depends on what we hit off of Teferi. Is our opponent double queuing? Because <laughs> they sure are taking a while. That was not a thing. Um... I think we just play this and then we just corpse dance this guy back if they try to block. I think that's I think that's worth keeping Teferi around. And then next turn we can tap two, plane cycle, one, two, three, four. We'll have five mana so we can cast anything else. I would love to just be able to discard this. That would be great. Man, one more mana. We could discard it and cast it. Man, we're so close to everything. That's a bummer. Hey, look at that guy. Get your clues. Oh, Mox Emerald. Okay. They're doing well. Four total mana. Five total mana.
I do think this noble hierarch is going to attack Teferi. <sighs> yeah, I kind of like just blocking and killing their... And, they, and we have Tefri out, so they can't actually even do anything about this. Yeah, I think having Tefri out is just really strong. Sure. Oh, it's Heim Spiral off the top. Thank God Hull Breacher's in the graveyard, I guess. Yeah, that seems good. Now I don't really want to pitch anything. We will plus here. Could have also let Teferi die and then Sarah Paragon it back. But we can do that with these guys as well, which is pretty good. At this point, it doesn't really matter if we discard or draw the card because they're going to time spiral. <laughs> so... Oh, that's interesting. Well, they would have gotten back Hull Breacher, so that's not great for us. I think we're plane cycling here because it's the only way to play anything here. And yes, we will keep that underneath, which is fantastic. Uh, let's get Gala Shrine because obviously I want to play a card this turn. Say so yes. And I do think Sarah Paragon's probably better here. Activated everything, sure. Oh, one ring, wow. Yeah, those are pretty good. Those are some high power level cards. Goblin Welder. That's very good with the One Ring. Okay. Why aren't we time spiraling? Upheaval? Oh my god. That's terrible for us. Elder, okay. I don't know what's going on. Now there's no Elder, okay. They can't cast upheaval here, right? One, two, three, four. No, that doesn't seem good. All right, ring is gone. Spiral and upheaval are in hand. We really love uh, like an Archon of Cruelty. What does Archon of Cruelty even do? I don't know. Oh, Lord. Oh, it makes them discard. So we know the three cards in your hand. Spiral, Upheaval, Karn, right? Those are very hard to deal with. Emrakul. That's pretty cool. Until your next turn you cast sorcery spells as though they had flash. So can we discard Emrakul? And then exhume it into play? And then they upheaval? That doesn't work, does it? Hmm. 
Oh boy, we're so close <laughs> to doing the thing. We have eight mana. <sighs> Putting Emrakul into play, they just upheaval, right? We're not casting it, so we don't get the extra turn. I guess we're just dealing six. Oh boy, this is rough, man. The upheaval is the problem. Six, seven, eight, nine. They have nine total mana, so they get to float three, then play their land, so they get four mana. Draw card. Gristle Brand. That does do more. Interesting. But then they get the Hull Breacher, so we kind of have to hope we find an answer. It was one, two, one, two, and then we have three mana left, four mana left over. I mean, I feel like this is our best chance. We don't get to draw? Why don't we get to draw? I mean, they don't have Hull Breacher in play. Oh, because they're gonna put it into play. Smart. <laughs> yeah, if they choose Hull Breacher, that's bad. That's, that's the end, right? Yeah, that's that's a good point. I didn't. There's just a lot going on, and I'm trying to figure out how to navigate. I don't. I don't think we've had a great a shot here. Yep, that's pretty good. All right, that'll do. Like our chance was like them just not doing that. What would we have hit? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Lotus into Palace Jailer, and it doesn't like nothing. Like it's just hard to deal with those cards. <sighs> Couldn't we have hard cast the demon? What does that do though? Not really, no. Uh yeah, maybe. I mean like I don't think we had f did we have four I don't know if we had four black, but either way, like it doesn't do anything because then they just upheaval us. So the 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 goal is to draw answers to that. But we don't have many is the problem. Like I would love a duress here or a thought seize, but we don't have that. I mean, I'm really tempted to just bring in like Hero of Blade Hold and like Flicker Wisp and like Wedding Announcement and just like kind of be more aggressive. I think our deck seems good here. I'm just gonna submit. We don't have any, the only thing I'm worried about is like Hull Breacher, Time Spiral, and Upheaval. That's that's pretty much my, my fears.
Uh, no blue sources. Can we do better than this? Probably. I think this is better. Sure, we'll keep this. Ship of planes. Yeah, that's a good one. That's a good that's a good sequence of events you did there. Well, whatever they play here, we can bounce with Teferi, which is nice. He said confidently. Yeah, she gone. Oh, that's good. I like that. Not right this second, per se, but, you know. Don't like that as much. We could have played Mox Jet instead of Swamp and then played Godless Shrine. Very good. Hmm, very good. Exhum. If we play this, they just bounce it. We could actually Odawara this guy. Which doesn't seem terrible. Teferi then takes one. I don't feel like this match is going to go well for us. Seal is just such good value. I mean, the card is kind of medium, but one mana to just keep on board. Like you can, in it's nice that you can invest the mana early. It's almost like foretell that way, right? Mm, seems good. Mm, seems good. Mm, seems good. Well, <laughs> okay. Wrath of God, where are you? Where are you, little Wrath of God? All right. Yeah, this game's over. Land, land into Lotus with three creatures on board is pretty good. Well, might as well do that. Goblin Welder, sure. Okay. I mean, you have to bounce Sir Paragon here, right? Hmm. 
Choose a card. You can have a welder, not Othari, because that guy is very good. There's that Lotus we knew about. Engineer on top. Yep. Really? Did they forget they have Seal on board? What's going on? Because now I just get to recast Teferi. It's a bold strategy, Cotton. Let's see if it pays off for him. They do have Engineer on top, which means they can go get something, put it in the graveyard, then swap it immediately with Welder. Oh. That seems to mean they cannot do that. Interesting. Well, I know they're going to bounce Sarah, but I still have to attack their, their Urza here, or their Karn. Oh my god. How is this happening? Oh no, I didn't plus. Oh, uh, I Wait, hold on. Yeah, I didn't plus. That was that was bad. I knew this was a sorcery, but I was like, "Oh, Teferi's going to let me cast this at instant speed." That's not how Teferi works if you don't plus him. Yep, that was a that was a punt for sure. Yeah, that one's pretty good. Yep. That's pretty good. Wrath of God here would be great. Jeez. Yeah, it's fine. It's a free hit, right? One, two, three, four, five, six. I mean, we have seven mana. Like, if we cast this last turn, we could actually just have cast it this turn, but... Where's all the big creatures and, and ways to to take advantage of said big creatures? Teferi, my face, Teferi, sure, yeah. Teferi's gone. Yeah, that's a bummer. Trading a treasure for a lotus, that's just good value. And then playing your engineer, that's just good value. Yeah, this didn't have much of an effect. We're just, we haven't drawn much this game. It's pretty bad. This game's over. Like, we just don't have any, like, wow, nothing nothing really coming up here. Yeah, sure. That match was pretty rough. <laughs> I think we drew pretty poorly. Like, we just drew a bunch of medium cards that did not interact very well with what they had. So, oh well.
Let it snow, let it snow, let it snow. And then we wait again. <laughs> All right. Oof. That's not good. Okay, that's very good. Uh, turn one. Talisman into currency. I think we're just shipping a swamp here. Wow, that looks great. So we can go Swamp, into Jet, into Talisman, into Converter. And that's most of our hand. Fingers crossed it works. Turn two, four mana is good. Give me a card to show and tell. One time. Well, that could be a card to show and tell. It was not, in fact, a card to show and tell. Should have played a land first. Um, blue, blue. We get to untap one, so I'm pretty sure we have to just pitch discard. Yeah, we should have played Deserted Beach, but like, if we hit something like two good cards, I'd rather have kept this. Or I'd rather have pitched this. But I do want to have two mana up so I can currency convert. So I think we're just getting rid of blue because we already have a blue. Yes. And yes. Play a land. And now we can actually make a guy or convert some currency. I think we're just going to make, make a treasure here because I don't want to discard show and tell for obvious reasons. Yep, that's fine. Put card, exile, just currency converter. Put the beach in there. All right, so easy choice. Okay, it's getting worse. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, just play Godless Shrine. We have one, two, three, four, five. We have six mana right now. I think we keep this in case like we draw another spell. We have six mana. We can cast basically anything. And if we draw like an eight drop, we couldn't cast it next turn, so we can just play the land then. And then make two treasures over the course of time and then just cast it, so. It's always sad when your like hand is this explosive, but it's just missing that one component. <laughs> sure. Yep. I mean, to be fair, mana sources, we've drawn one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight mana sources and frantic search show and tell. And so it's three to three to eight in terms of mana sources. To actual spells. Yep, had a feeling you were going to snap back time walk. Because why wouldn't you?
Oh boy. How about now? <laughs> Do I get a turn now? Great. Hmm, I see. Well, let's convert some more currency, I guess. Fantastic. So if I make a 1-1, one, one, I block here, I take 7 damage. Great. Next card? No. No. Yes, okay. Well, either one of these would have been great. Let's bring in Wrath of God. For... Thieving Skydiver seems pretty good. We haven't drawn Thieving Skydiver at all. Uh, let's cut... Let's cut Urtai Resurrected, I guess. Hmm. That's pretty good. <laughs> the problem is we're not on the draw, so we'd have to go skip this turn, skip next turn, and then exhume, and that seems pretty rough. Whereas, like, we have a bunch of cards that we can hit that let us discard. Oh, boy. This is a miracle. Oh boy. They get a draw step. And then we get to attack with a miracle. Oh, we just win the game. They don't even want to draw a card. They're like, I don't think we have anything in our deck that's going to be able to beat an Emrakul for two mana. And that's totally fine with me. I, I don't mind at all. That felt pretty okay. Yeah, you have to be the turd you want to see in the world. Okay, this is another turd hand. We can go turn one Paragon, get Lotus back. Wow, that's good. I like that a lot. All right. Come on, 2-1. This is what we're going for here. Oh, that's cute. Oh, that is a uh, cute. Oh, we can even steal that? Oh, so we can do this. Go Lotus. And then we just draw two off of Skydiver and get to keep Skull Clamp. Holy jeez. This is a turn right here, my dudes.
Cast with Kicker. And this automatically equips to the Skydiver, so we're just drawing two here and keeping the clamp. And then we get to play this from the graveyard next turn. <laughs> that's, yeah, that's pretty good. That's a turn. Any discard outlet's also phenomenal here because we have these three things. Mana base not looking so hot, but we get to keep drawing cards, so. <laughs> yep, all right, that's pretty good. Lotus is a hell of a card. Sarah Paragon's also very good. People underestimate Sarah Paragon, so stop doing that. It's very good. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you next time.